Lately, we've been taking a look at a bunch of different ways to create grow simulations. So I figured we would take a look at the PyroSource spread node, since you can use that to create grow simulations as well as for a bunch of other things. So this project file for what you saw in the intro will be available on Patreon. So if you want to grab that and learn through that, then go ahead and head over there. But let's go ahead and drop in a grid. And I recommend using a grid to visualize this when you're first starting out, because it can be a little bit difficult to really understand what's going on on a complicated mesh. So a grid makes it nice and easy to see what's going on. So I'm gonna give it some resolution here, and then we can drop in our pyro source spread. And right away we have some things going on. So if I set this to none, it should be set to that by default. You won't have any visualization going on, but if I just go through a couple of these, the burn total temperature, or sorry, the burn temperature and total burn are all set to this bluish purple. That means that there is a value of zero in there. We come over to our fuel, we have some different values going on. So we got some fuel, I click play. You can see that this kind of injects a bunch of fuel into our simulation. So we have values just kind of growing. And then we have this diffusion, which doesn't do anything because it's not animated, but this will affect our simulation. So we also have a bunch of settings in here and we can add some different noises, affect the fuel and the combustion in here. So different things in there. Let's take a look at that here in just a second. But the reason we have no burn or total burn in here is because we have no temperature. So if we drop in an attribute create, just wire this in. If we set this to temperature and then we give it a value, we'll give it a value of one. If I reset this, make sure we're on burn you can see that we have some initial burn going on. If I click play, it's going to burn across our entire mesh. So we may or may not want that. And there's a couple of ways that we can get around that. One is by just creating a group node. And I'm gonna set this just to points. And then I'm gonna select some points down here in the corner, just for demonstration purposes. And then we'll set the that group and our temperature. So now if I click play, you can see that nothing actually happens. And the reason for that is because this is actually cooling faster than it can spread to the other points around it. So if we drop this cooling rate down and I click play now, you're gonna see that it is gonna grow across the mesh. Now we can affect the look of this a few different ways. We wanna increase the speed at which it grows across the mesh. There's a couple of different ways we can do that. We can increase this rate. And if I press play, it's gonna grow across a lot faster. If I lower that, you can see that it's gonna grow a lot slower across the mesh. Now we can also make it a lot faster by changing this ignition temperature in the combustion tab. Basically what this is saying is it's taking a temperature of the, part or the point and then it's spreading it, it's checking what temperature it needs to hit before it actually spreads or ignites. So if we lower this, it's gonna make it easier for the temperature to kind of flow across the mesh. So it's going to speed up our simulation once again. And if I come back in here and reset the rate, this is what it looks like with that setting. And if we come back into the, the combustion and we increase that, it's going to really not combust. Let's just raise it a little bit, raise it too far. It's going to not ignite at all. This slows it down again, so you can use this ignition temperature as well as this rate to control the speed at which it grows across the mesh. If I press play, this is what it looks like right now. And then if we increase the max neighbors here, you can see that, that it's kind of hard to see, but it is actually affecting the rate at which it is spreading across the mesh. So it is going a little bit faster once you up the max neighbors as well. So, Let's take a look at this again, and you can see that it has got some breakup in the edge, but we may want to change that. So we can do that with this diffusion. So let's take a look at this noise across our mesh here and kind of kind of explain what's going on here. So basically the way this works, it's kind of hard to explain, it's something you just kind of have to observe 
but where this is blue, it's going to be harder for the temperature to flow across that. Conversely, if it's red here, it's going to spread to that a lot easier. So let's just kind of up this, let's go back to the start here, and that should be good. Let's click play here, let it run a little bit, and we should start to see some, yeah. So if we look over here, we have some breakup going on. If we look in our diffusion, you can see right in here is where it's blue. So it's having a harder time to kind of ignite these, these points, which is where all the blue is at. So it's gonna spread a lot easier in the red and in the blue, it'll just be a little bit harder for it to go. Let's go ahead and drop this down and you can see that that's going to really break up our mesh or our, our line moving across our mesh quite a bit. So that may be the look that you're going for. Let's go ahead into this fuel tab and we actually have some noise going on inside of the injection. If we, I believe we take a look at this post burn rate. Actually, it's not doing what I thought it would. If I lower this injection rate, I think, yeah. So we'll start to see some noise in our in our post burn or in this injection field. So you can disable that and restart and that kind of goes away. So that could be the look that you're going for. Maybe you don't want to have any of this. So the injection rate, let's just take a look at that here for a second by itself. The injection rate, basically this is gonna inject fuel into the simulation. So it's gonna be continuous injection so you can get some different looks with this. But if you go too low, press play, you see it starts to light on fire, but it kind of just fizzles out. That's because it's burning the fuel faster than it can inject it into the simulation. So that's basically where this greenish color is. It's burning off the fuel faster than it can inject into it to get to this full temperature here. So get some different looks with that. Now you may want to just start with some initial fuel and you can get some interesting looks with this as well. Basically just like a line moving across your mesh. Now if you want to just fatten up that line a little bit, you can just crank up this initial fuel and you can see that that line is a lot thicker now. So get some interesting looks with playing around with these different fuel settings and the post burn rate you can do some interesting things with that. Now, you may not like the way this diffusion works in here. You can actually set that ourselves. So let's go ahead and create an attribute noise. Let's wire this in and actually we want to keep our temperature. So let's just wire this in here. And if I take a look at our geometry spreadsheet, you can see we have this diff rate. That's going to be our diffusion rate. So if we come into our noise, and we change the name to match that. So diff rate, you can see if I come back into our pyrosaurus spread, come into the diffusion, we now have our noise showing up in combination with the noise that we had. So let's just disable the noise in the pyrosaurus spread, come back in here and you see we have this noise. So we can affect this. We wanna crank up the amplitude a little bit. We drop the element size. Actually, this is a vector, so we actually would just want a float. And you can do some interesting things with this. Maybe give it some red in here because we have this warping setting. We have a bunch of different settings that we don't necessarily have in the pirate source spread. So maybe you want to up the warp, maybe the size, maybe up the gradient warp. You can see we get a different looking effect in there. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Maybe you like this to break up your edge a little bit better. It's kind of personal preference. We can also do this with a point VOP. So let's do point VOP. Let's wire this in here. Jump back to the beginning. And in here, set it to diffusion, which we have nothing right now because we have it disabled. If we do a bind export, we can drop in a noise. Let's do like a curl noise. Let's wire in the position and wire that into the bind export. Let's set this to a the same thing that we had before. So diffusion rate or diff rate. And we may need to 
There we go. So, so this is a vector, I believe. So it's going to be, or it's trying to convert it to a float. So that's going to give us some weird look, but you can take a look at what this looks like because this gives you some interesting effects. So that may be something that you're going for. Or we can just do a vector to float. I believe this should kind of fix our issue here. Yeah, so that gives us a different look. And if I press play now, you know, it still kind of glitches out. So just kind of play around with the the point bop and the different noises in there. You can get some interesting, interesting looks for sure. Um, but we can actually jump on over to the example that I had going. Disable that. So I've got a couple different examples in here to show you. In this one, we are just turning this into a VDB to remesh this essentially. And then in here, we have a, a group setup with a random chance just to give us a random group. So let's take a look that just some random random points that are being selected again we're creating the the temperature and the diffusion rate with an attribute noise and then we have our pyro source spread in here so let's take a look at what this will give us and see I, it's just kind of growing across the mesh and again that's because of the different settings that i have set so that's an interesting look that you can get and then with this as well you can do some interesting things with the material. Let's actually jump on over to this one. So this is going to be a head geometry that I had downloaded from 3scans.com. So I'll leave that link in the description. Uh, if you want to grab this mesh, you can grab it and follow along. I did remesh this with a uh, quad remesher, and then I just re-exported that out and brought it back in. And then we have some different settings in here. I used the point bob for this one. I actually added a noise and then I multiplied this and I believe I had this set as my temperature. So what I, yep, I set this as my temperature. So if we take a look at our temperature, you can see that I'm using this noise to actually just bind it to my temperature. So if I just kind of up this, see that we get something different set that to something like 0.4 it's actually up this a little bit yeah. it's not wanting to go because this is kind of heavy mesh so you see this is just kind of setting our initial uh, temperature with a noise could be something interesting that you want to do Let's just reset this back. Can't remember what I had it at, 0.3. There we go. So if we jump back into our pyro source spread here and we come over to our burn and see this is what we get. Now, this is just a, a line growing across the mesh, sort of like we had before, but I used this in the material, but I also used the total burn. So if I drop down a blast node and do total burn, set that to points, you can blast away the points of the mesh that are below this value. So the total burn is gonna continuously increase because it is burning, the mesh is, is burning. So you can set a value for the total burn and then it will kinda grow the mesh onto the screen, which is an interesting sort of look. Get some interesting effects with that. And again, uh, I just blurred out this value here. So I blurred out the burn and then I use that in the material. I'm not gonna go over that right now, but you can take a look at the project files if you're interested in that. Get some cool effects going with that. But that is kind of an intro to the Pyro source spread node and some of the things that you can do with that. Uh, probably we'll take a look at how to use this with Pyro in the future but that's, we'll save that for another time. I also want to try out some other things with this because I haven't uh, played around with it too much with anything that I didn't show you here.
but I've got some different ideas that I want to try out. So you may see some, some more with this node in the future. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel on Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. Like I said, this project file will be available on Patreon. So if you want to grab that and go through these different examples that I have set up here, see the different settings that I use to create these effects that you saw in the beginning, you can grab those on Patreon see kind of what I did with that in the materials as well. So interesting things in there. Check that out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.